My name is Jeremy Walton, and this is the Cinematography of Cherry. Let's go. I wanted to make this video a while ago, but I had to go through a bunch of info to put this together. So if you're into creating different looks technically to tell your story, then this one's for you. You know the film, but I'll mention the details anyway. This is the 2021 film Cherry, directed by Anthony and Joe Russo, cinematography by Newton Thomas Siegel. There may be some minor spoilers, so go watch the movie first. This was a movie that was broken up into six chapters. This was because of the novel it was based on and the journey of a 15 year time frame that felt more episodic. We didn't storyboard anything really. We talked about each chapter, we talked about the look of the film a fair amount, and we share images and references that we came across, both thematically and aesthetically. And I think that drove a lot of the definition of the look of the film. And with that, let's jump right in and dissect each chapter for this film. This is where Cherry meets Emily and when they fall in love. The filmmakers called this section magical realism. Their relationship was filmed in this fairy tale style that was enhanced with lighting and lens choices to create that magical realism. There was some key components to that look. Every time he looks at her, her whole background is not only blurry, but has this kind of swirly atmospheric effect. That just enhances this feeling of puppy love. And when it comes to lighting, Siegel explains this as, from the moment he first sees Emily and the light is moving across her and all the background is dark, she's standing out like she's lit by a spotlight and then the light comes up and you see she's in a classroom. Part of this look came from the very old Todd AO anamorphic lenses. We're talking about the 50s and if you look up these lenses, you'll see they hold some unique characteristics. Filmmakers choose lenses based on their needs. So do these characteristics match the look Siegel was going for? It's a very soft lens with a lot of optical imperfections, but it has a very creamy, dreamy kind of quality to it. Yeah, I think those lenses were a good choice and combined with slow evolving shots with the use of a dolly and Steadicam gave this chapter what it needed. I think joining the army because your girlfriend broke up with you might not be the best decision. And for Cherry, they wanted to capitalize on that choice he made. So how can they transfer that choice to a look? Well, you first have to describe the terrible choice he realized he made, and one way would be a feeling of being boxed in with no escape. For this, the lens choice was going to be important, and yes, I said lens choice as in one. Most of basic training was a static camera and are all done with only one lens, which was a 14 millimeter Sigma spherical. So each moment of basic training had a very singular presentation and its own particular aspect ratio. I forgot to mention they were shooting on the Sony Venice 6K. Camera choice wasn't really talked about, but with that sensor, they were using the entirety of the lens, which made it possible to have Cherry right up in the lens, filling the frame, which visually would represent being boxed in. So it creates a very different feeling than everything that came before it, and frankly, everything that comes after it in the movie. You take the aspect ratio, lens choice, and an uninviting desaturated look, and you have all the elements to the look of basic. This part of the film, everything got real, and that change called for a different look. War was more grounded in reality and they took a more journalistic approach. This chapter was referred to the human drama and it was shot more straightforward because the stakes are life and death now compared to basic. The lens choice for this was the Leica M series still lenses that are popular with photographers and we're back to the widescreen format. Now, you might think war would be full of handheld shots. Here's what Siegel has to say about shooting handheld. It's my birthplace as I come from a documentary background. It's what I grew up doing and it's what I love to do. But I also feel it sometimes is used as a crutch to create an energy that really should be there in the story and performance. So I tend to be relatively conservative about handheld. They also slightly altered their shooting style while at the military base. Because it was a safe place for them compared to combat, they referenced the shooting style from earlier in the film, using a dolly to have a feeling of Cherry's home, which was a great contrast to the battle scenes while still living in the same look for the chapter. Before Cherry dives into the world of drugs, he struggles with being at home and the abrupt transition from soldier to civilian. For this chapter, they went back to the Todd AO lenses because we're back in his original environment, but intercut with specific scenes using the Hawk X lenses. For this chapter, even though they had the same Todd AO lenses, the framing was altered to match Cherry's feelings of being out of place. You see in those early scenes when Cherry goes to the theater with Emily, and there's very odd eccentric framing. The frames are all asymmetrical and unbalanced, and there's often too much headroom or too much room on one side of the frame or the other, or people are looking in the wrong direction. This awkward, unbalanced framing was a good way to bring us into Cherry's world of PTSD and what ultimately pushes him to drugs. 
A lot was going on in this chapter, and the framing, lighting, and lenses all helped to show these transitions. It was more like a roller coaster ride with Cherry and how he was dealing with his trauma and the result of the decisions he was making. The frame bounces up a little more and becomes more comfortable, balanced compositions until the drug addiction takes over, and then once again you fall out of balance. Visually, that's how the filmmakers were able to take you on this ride. Eventually, it's too much and everything goes south. Of course, you realize that drug addiction is not a solution to being traumatized by war. And that's when the real descent into hell and drug addiction and eventually a life of crime with the bank robberies happens. His use of drugs also invited a new lens to the production. This is the tilt shift lens that's pretty interesting. It's a type of lens that's been around for many, many years and was first designed to do architectural stuff because you could fix perspective distortion. It really is about perspective with that lens. There are many ways to show drug use and as you can see with the entire production, it was about lens choices, which can be one of many ways to tell your story. There was also another ingredient to make all this work. The whole vibe and the way you respond to the material is different. It's not just about using a wide lens, it's where that lens is looking. Film is all about point of view, whether first person, third person, or alien. With that, let's move on to the last chapter. Everything leads to Cherry going to prison. There's a lot of time that needs to pass, and how can you creatively show that? Most of the time, it's better to show than tell. Whatever you're doing as a filmmaker, just remember that. This is another choice Cherry has to make among a bunch of bad choices, and the filmmakers did a great job of showing when that took place. His time in prison was told basically through a montage, but it was all done on a dolly through match cuts, and that's all I want to say about that. There's really no dialogue, and the score is great. It's something if you haven't seen, go watch, otherwise you already know what I'm talking about. They returned to the Hawk X lenses as well, and we're shooting with the more straightforward approach. It really helps steer us in a direction on this roller coaster we've been on for two hours. This film was designed at the same time that it has a very bold style, to be very intimate, and I also find that very satisfying, when you can do something that is both epic and intimate at the same time. There's a lot more I could go into, but I can't cover everything. If you found this interesting, you can easily find videos and articles about this movie. I just wanted to give you an overall picture of how this film was told, and what tools the filmmakers used to tell it. Well, there you have it, the cinematography of Cherry. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that like button because there's definitely more on the way. Subscribe so you don't miss out. Leave a comment if you want to. Until next time, it's a wrap.